Well, hello, my friends. I've had some people wishing that I would be more on video and that I would share my ideas and thoughts and had another person tell me, why don't I go through some Reddit posts, subreddits, religious fruitcake, for example, that you're looking at here and just comment on the different stories that are there. And so I'm just going to try that for a few minutes and see what you all think. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll just go through here and see, uh, here's the top one. I couldn't have said it any better. Religious people will tell me that I'm going to hell for not believing in God. But whose fault is that? God knows me, right? He knows what I'm thinking, the reasons and motivations behind every decision I've ever made and will ever make. He's omniscient, after all. Meaning he knows exactly what it would take to convince me of his existence, and being omnipotent or all-powerful, he could act out just that. And he's a fair, just, loving God that wants to save our souls, right? So surely, if that were the case, he would want to do whatever it takes to save me. And yet, he hasn't. And so we're left with three options here. Either he just doesn't care to and I'm left to suffer at the hands of his own negligence, or he flat out doesn't want to and I'm given the ultimatum of having blind faith in him and obeying his every command, even though it wouldn't be sincere, or else I'll suffer for all eternity. Either way, it's God's fault if I don't believe in him, and yet I'll have to suffer for his own failures. Or, of course, the third and most likely option, he doesn't exist. Yeah, so, <clears throat> very well said. Um, very articulate, for sure. Um, and, you know, a little bit of Mozart Requiem Mass in the background for <laughs> added trauma. I mean, I think that's what it is anyway. You know, this, uh, this problem goes way back from the beginning of humanity. And that is, uh, it's, there's a theological term for it called theodicy. And that's the problem of evil in the world. And it's, this is not a new thing. It's uh, ancient, ancient problem that's been around with us for a long, long, long time. And it basically is, if there is a God, why is there suffering in the world? Why is there evil in the world? And why do people suffer? And why is God completely silent? Have you ever read, by the way, Endo's book, Silence? I mean, the movie came out a few years ago. Uh, brutal. The book's even more brutal. If you have the courage to read that book, I encourage you to do so. Basically about Puerto Rican Catholic missionaries who went to Japan to, you know, evangelize. And the, and the torture, the torment, the suffering they went through and the Japanese Christians went through. It's just, it's just, it's mind-blowing. And God was completely silent through the whole thing, if there is a God, right? So that, that's, that's, that's the problem. Granted, it's a serious problem. I mean, intelligent, wise people all down through the centuries have written about this problem, trying to figure it out and trying to solve it. So this isn't a new thing. Uh, now, my personal way is kind of, sounds kind of Buddhist, the middle path. And, and that's between the two binary extremes. There is a God, there isn't a God. Mine's the middle path, where there is a God, there isn't a God, are both two sides of the same coin. And uh, I know this is unsatisfying for a lot of people because we are very binary in our thinking, black and white, that has to be yes or no. So often when people ask me, do you believe in God? I'm not going to give them a yes or no answer. I take the middle path where I, all through my life and maybe your life too, I was given two choices, either to blindly believe that there's a God and just uh, ignore all the problems that came with that or blindly, in my case, reject the existence of God. And, you know, those are were the, my two choices. Either believe or not believe. I've chosen the middle path. The problem is through. And I, I've realized now, I've, I had a huge epiphany moment way back in 2009. That's 13 years ago where I saw that we are all one. No, I wasn't on mushrooms or ayahuasca or anything. It was a epiphany moment where I saw the oneness of all things. And this young woman here, um, Mads um, and I are one. Her beliefs are her beliefs. She's, she's choosing her own language and words to understand the reality. And I've, I've chosen mine. There's only one reality. She's chosen her way of, of understanding it and articulating it. And I've chosen mine. So, yeah, I mean... No wonder this is so popular because uh, it, it might give permission for people to say, yeah, oh, that's right. It doesn't make any sense. I just reject the belief in God altogether. And, um, you know, not judging. For me, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a rant here. 
what's most important for me and what I'm passionate about is that you're free to choose how to be spiritual. You're free to understand the universe in your way and reality in your way. So for me, the outcome, where you land is not important to me. The fact that you land there out of your own agency and your own self-determination and your own freedom, that's what's important to me. So if Mads uh, here is is free and she's making this choice out of her personal freedom, yay, I'm all for it. Um, so th that's what I I think is the most important thing. Anyway, that was a little bit of a long rant um, for a short little video, but you know, well done. Be a baby factory. Oh, the transformed wife. I've heard of her on Twitter. Look at your bodies, women. Breasts, ovaries, and a womb. God created you for the magnificent job of creating and nourishing new life. What can be more important than this? In other words, the traditional, old-fashioned, and conservative, uh, complementarian opinion that a woman's place is in the home, barefoot and pregnant and cooking and breastfeeding and, um, you know, fucking their husbands on demand and, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, <clears throat> but the transformed wife, when I first came across her on Twitter, I thought it must be a parody account. It must be satire. But no, apparently she's the real deal. Yeah. Oh, and somebody, Anne responds, using my brain to get a PhD, then educate loads of women about how they are more than just hosts for babies and servants for men. Yeah. Good, good response, Anne. You know, I grew up, maybe you did too. I grew up in that kind of a culture, uh, religious culture, evangelical, old school, you know, um, where the woman's place is in the home and, um, you know, the, the complementarian movement, uh, still teach us the same thing. I'm sure um, transformed wife uh, or woman <clears throat> would, would say the same thing, but a woman's place is in the home. Um, well, here's a cartoon. What's this? Yeah, my beliefs forbid me to eat ice cream in the park on Mondays. Then don't do it. You do not understand, as I believe that, you also are forbidden to do so. And this is how the religious treat others. That's right. You know, I don't care what you believe. I really don't care. I really do not care what you believe, but you can't expect or require me to believe the same thing. That's the problem with the fundamentalist mindset. Um, so that's something Chris Hedges um, spoke about, uh, the fundamentalist mindset. You can find it anywhere. It's not just in religion. It can be in the atheist community too, the fundamentalist mindset that if you don't think the way I do, then you're an idiot and you're wrong and a sinner, or, you know, whatever. It's everywhere. It's in uh, science. It's in education. It's in the military. It's in, you know, schools. It's in uh, culture. It's in your workplace. It's everywhere that the fundamentalist mindset is you need to think the way I think because what I believe is true. And we can't help that. Therefore, if you don't believe the way I do, then you're wrong. And not just wrong. There's something wrong with you. God will be sad. Imagine worshiping a God who, despite creating 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe, is really mad about your dildos. <laughs> well, I don't have any dildos, so he's not mad at my dildos. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen memes and cartoons where, you know, Jesus, I've drawn cartoons where Jesus shows up because you're masturbating or, or whatever, um, you know, of all the things going on in the world. And that's what God cares about. Um pretty ridiculous. By the way, I saw on TikTok yesterday that they've gotten pictures of the black hole in the center of the Milky Way, the our universe. So it's uh, with the Hubble telescope, I think. Am I right? Anyway, pretty fascinating stuff. Thanks, Eric. Sprinkle, banned for being aggressively atheist and told Christians are 99% of the planet. <clears throat> Um, you, you came in our sub acting aggressively atheist per se, but don't even realize 99% of the world population. Yes, that includes figures such as Obama are Christian. What? 99% of the world population is Christian? No. Usually when that many people believe in something, it means they're right and you're wrong. Oh my goodness. Buddy boy. I hate that when people say something like that, like dear or buddy boy or sweetheart. It's a slur, really. It's an insult. It's like 
putting somebody down, right? Nice job shitting on the most persecuted people in planet Earth. Oh my goodness. Most persecuted people in the planet Earth, Christians. Come on. Uh, and 99%, we know that's not true. I don't have any figures in front of me, but certainly I know that 99% of the world population is not Christian. Oh my goodness. Aggressively atheist. You know, when um, evangelicals are preaching in the subways or on the street or in the malls or whatever, they're called evangelists. But if an atheist is making a point with, with passion, they're called aggressive. <laughs> so same with a woman. In terms of community, I do have uh, a value that I value. I have an online community called The Lasting Supper for people deconstructing and wanting to have a safe place to do that out loud. Um, I do have a value. And, and we have everybody from believers to atheists and everybody in between there. Church going, pastors and, and atheists who will never darken the door of church again and, and anything in between. And we get along great. But I have one value. You're allowed to be atheist but you're not allowed to be anti-theist. You're allowed to be a believer, but you're not allowed to be anti-anti-anti-atheist. <laughs> okay? It's, like, it's it's okay to be an atheist. You can't be anti-theist because there's theists in the group. And uh, there's been a couple of times when there were anti-theists where I had to kick them out because they were attacking believers in the same way. Believers should not attack atheists. We mutually respect one another's place. We each have our own way of, again, uh, understanding the universe and articulating the universe or reality as we experience and feel it and think it and see it. And so that's uh, th that aggressiveness against others, whether they're believers or atheists or whatever, um, just doesn't make for community. But, you know, this one is um, a person being an atheist and being kicked out because, you know, everybody's a Christian and uh, you're wrong. Like, mm, whoops. Anyway, let's try one more. Another cartoon. I'm a cartoonist, if you didn't know that. But you can see my work at nakedpastor.com. I am God's messenger. What is God's message? Give God's messenger money. <coughs> and on the eighth day, God created evangelism. <laughs> yeah. I have similar cartoons about money and, you know, I have no problem with money. We uh, we need money, right? This is the way the world is. Everybody everywhere. We need money. So I don't have a problem with with money. Churches needing money in order to pay their bills and pay their staff. And I don't, I don't care. But we need to handle it wisely and generously and compassionately and, you know, not be greedy or ambitious and all those kinds of things. So... You know, I totally understand when pastors need to get paid and churches need to keep their lights on and have buildings and, you know, pay staff and pay for materials for daily vacation Bible school and all that stuff. I have no problem with that. I don't care. So it, it's when you get into the big bucks, right? And the corruption that, that goes on. That's where I have a problem. Um, but I've, you know, I've drawn a lot of cartoons about money and the church and how, you know, it, it can mess things up. It really can in religion, spirituality, and in the church. So I get it. I totally do. Okay. That's enough for now. So I thought I'd give it a shot and see what you guys think. Um, you know, I'm putting this up on YouTube and wanting to grow my audience there, um, branching out a little bit. And if you want to see my blog posts and my cartoons and my art and stuff that I have available, go to nakedpastor.com and we'll see you guys again soon. Much love. Bye.